Hello everyone, bringing you a video today which I thought was a little bit different but will nevertheless hopefully be of interest. A couple of items in my collection which I've picked up over the years which are not strictly military but they're manufactured from military surplus post World War II. The surplus market really boomed after World War II. It didn't really exist in a big way prior to the Second World War. Uh, it, it, there were some uh, dealing in surplus military items but the, the real boom in the surplus industry did to, uh, occur post Second World War and obviously some of the most uh, useful items for resale to the public you would find that things like gas capes could be sold as waterproofs all sorts of even as sort of disposable items which is one reason that they're so rare it's quite interesting what was sold and for what purposes but the problem was a lot of surplus dealers of course buy huge stocks of surplus webbing the haversacks and packs may be very useful. The pouches are slightly less so. So you'll see these modified. Uh, they come up on eBay occasionally where they've actually been uh, disassembled and stitched. Two pouches had the side taken off and stitched together with the central section and a buckle to make them into a more useful size of bag with a shoulder strap added. And then you'll have all sorts of other bits of webbing, webbing straps and various other bits and pieces, maybe scrap canvas or old tents that actually are a bit big to sell in the... the civilian market and surplus dealers would do things with these you'd obviously re take the raw materials that they represented and, and manufacture new items and we're going to be looking at two packs in this video which fit that description they are possibly made of surplus canvas but certainly the webbing fittings and so forth on them or some of them are surplus and just to show you an example of how these items were recycled post second world war so without further ado we'll get into the main part of the video and have a look at these two different designs this is the first pack we're going to look at and it's probably already quite obvious that certain components are ex-British web equipment. Before we look at that in more detail, just have a quick look at the, the artwork that's been uh, applied to the flap here. So I'm assuming this was used by a sea cadet. We have SC here, Blanca. It's been varnished and then painted. We then have a gunnery instructor, Royal Navy gunnery instructor's badge, a petty officer's badge, and then the diving qualification over here all rather nicely recreated, painted on. And then we have a submarine and a shark. Just a nice element of, of this, a nice personalization of its former owner. And its former owner is actually detailed inside. We, we have a marking here, Stephen Chapel, 5 Lower Grove Road, Chesterfield. So who knows, uh, given the internet and given how what a small world we live in now, maybe Stephen will see this if, uh, if Stephen's still around. And, uh, I have your old pack, Stephen, from when you were presumably a sea cadet. So, the first thing that we see on the front here that's obviously ex-British webbing, it's possible these are actually uh, cut off the end of braces or um, possibly taken off uh, the supporting straps for a pack. We have the two uh, closure, closure straps here and then the buckles underneath. Interesting to note these are closed, closed buckles rather than being open buckles. It's likely the canvas is also surplus, although there's no way of telling what that's from. But made into a useful size, it's about the size of a, a pack, a 1908 or 1937 pattern pack. So about that sort of carrying capacity. We flip this over here. The straps, the shoulder straps are also surplus web equipment. You can see these have both been braces and they've both been braces with the loop uh, where they cross over in the back. Obviously the one brace would pass through that loop. Uh, and they were where they cross over in the back to keep the two together. So two of those have been used to make the shoulder straps. You can see here they've been stitched on inside out, so we can see a very clear stamp here. J A and H Limited, 1942. And then we have, I think we do, we did have a stamp on here just up here, but it's very, very faint and faded, unfortunately. But these were both of uh, the design, which just had the one-inch strap stitched onto the two-inch section which was supposed to go over the shoulders, but in this instance, it's actually been used for the lower part of the strap. So the bit that bears on your shoulders is the bit up here, the narrow one inch straps. Why they did it that way, I don't know. At the top, you can see we have the, the ends of the braces and they just buckle onto the pack again with a, t a pair of closed one inch buckles. So that's the, the first pack. As I say, it's something you see with these. It's often the case that des design is not as good as it could be or as good as it should be. An example of that is the fact that in this instance, the part of the straps that they've 
designed to, to bear on your shoulders is the narrow one inch section when you had a, a two inch section down here. Very, very strange. Anyway, that's the first of the two packs. And as I say, um, my favorite of the two, I really like the artwork, the badges that have been replicated along here and the artwork of the submarine shark really. I don't know, I find something endearing about that. The second pack we're going to look at here is a essentially a miniature Bergen. Um, we have one large compartment with two smaller pockets, as you can see here. It's been covered in old shoulder titles, uh, different regiments and corps, which is quite interesting of its own in its own right as well. But the main body uh, is made of canvas again, which is likely surplus, but again, I can't discern any origin for that. Looking at the front, it's not particularly apparent that this is made, at least partially, of surplus materials. You do have uh, draw cord in the main compartment. You can see here, it's actually quite nicely done with brass eyelets all the way around the throat there to uh, allow the draw cord to be fitted. So quite nicely made, all the edges and everything edged with tape, stop the fraying. The manufacturing is quite, uh, quite good. We turn this round, we can see the surplus material start to come in. So again, the shoulder straps are made of old webbing braces. You can see they're buckled on at this end using steel, sheridized steel buckles in this instance. Same here. I'll bring that up to the camera, you can see it's a, it's a sheridized steel buckle there. There is a stamp visible. If we turn this around to the way, it's not very clear, but there is a stamp just visible. Again, this would have been the inside face of the brace originally. Just about visible on there as well, although that may actually be, that may be writing. But uh, two braces used to manufacture the, the straps uh, for carrying this. Again, as I said, this is supposed to be the inside face. They've actually stitched them on the wrong way around. And where they, where they meet at the top here, that when I've, I have used this to carry stuff, uh, the brace actually digs into the shoulder there because they've been flipped they're actually the wrong way around so that's a, a flaw in the design that's often seen in these things you can see there's a metal metal frame within uh, very similar to uh, other designs of bergen it forms a, a pad around the hips the actual strap used to form that pad is canadian you can see that there 1942 although we've lost the manufacturer but uh, the canadian inspection stamp there and that's just been, it's had the ends hacked off and riveted on. This is a reduction woven example as well. So slight difference from the ones used for the shoulder straps. This does need some repair, unfortunately. It, there's a leather tab which secures the body of the pack onto the frame. That's missing on this side. As you can see, that's been torn away. So I need to replace that. Also missing one of the straps which were attached at the bottom here to allow you to carry something underneath. I need to reinforce this and reattach that. I do have it, but it, uh, it came loose, unfortunately. And the final bit of this to look at from a, a surplus point of view is the cross straps in the back here, which is supposed to give more padding against the back. These are actually a uh, machine gun belt, cloth machine gun belt. I don't believe they're for the Vickers. I don't believe this is Mark IV Vickers belt. I think it's too narrow. But if we take a 303 round here and pop it through, you can see there, it's, it's almost certainly some form of machine gun belt. Uh, it has pockets all the way along. Um, it will take a 303 round, it's a little bit tighter, though this is slightly flared case on it from where it's been fired. Just an, again, an interesting use of surplus that arguably could not really be used for another purpose. It's been used as a component in manufacturing this. As said earlier, haversacks, packs, respirator haversacks, all very useful. Even pouches were often sewn together to make a larger, more useful pouch. When you have lots of braces, machine gun strap, other straps and so forth, the only real way of sort of making use of them making them practical surplus to sell on to the general public, certainly at this time period before collecting was a thing, to turn them into things like this or use them as components in manufacturing things like this. So that's the second of the two packs. So there we are. I hope you found that interesting. Just to show that, you know, surplus dealers post-World War II were keen to make 
best use of what they had available from from you know that they purchased from the British Army as surplus. Unfortunately, a lot of web equipment was actually burned out for the brasses. That was also a thing that was done. Um, battle dress and, and boots and things were chopped up and uh, actually ploughed into the ground as fertiliser in some instances, although obviously some would be sold as surplus for use and so forth as well. So what happened with a lot of the surplus kit that had been manufactured for use in the Second World War, uh, and indeed some of it manufactured after as the army moved on to newer and better uniforms in the uh, Cold War period, uh, it's quite interesting uh, to look at that and hopefully this, this sort of little snippet of it in this video has been of interest. If it has and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It is greatly appreciated, as I always say. If you'd like to get in, if you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.